What's up, moviegoers? Welcome to the Markio Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony. In this episode of the Markio Podcast, I'm talking about Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, produced by Deborah Hill and John Carpenter, written by Tommy Lee Wallace, starring Tom Atkins. The movie was released October 22nd, 1982, has a running time of 98 minutes, had a budget of $2.5 million, and grossed $14.4 million at the box office. Now, this third entry in the Halloween franchise does not feature the main antagonist, Michael Myers, at all. Basically, this story took a science fiction horror route, and Michael Myers, however, was brought back six years later in Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now, Deborah Hill and John Carpenter believed that the Halloween series had a lot of potential to be an anthology series of films that centered around the night of Halloween, with each story from part three on focusing on a different genre of horror like poltergeist or possession or haunted house each setting would be a different story character and different way of how things were done now director tommy lee wallace stated that there were many ideas for halloween themed films some of which could have potentially created a number of their own sequels and that season of the witch was meant to be the first one now when the movie came out it was reviewed and it got negative reaction from fans and critics alike now, only in, you know, a couple of years have passed after that, or maybe in the mid-2000s, that this movie became a standalone cult hit, and people have actually enjoyed it much more than they think they should have. So basically, the concept of this story is that when these kids put on this mask, and all of a sudden a, you know, tune plays on the television, they get possessed, and this these masks take over their body, so to speak, it's very interesting and it's very inventive of how things were done. And, you know, Tom Aitkins as Daniel Chalice was really good and it was done well. And Dan O'Hurley as Conal Cochran, of course, you may know as that, you know, a big, you know, 80s villain who was in RoboCop and RoboCop 2. It was a character, you know, and when you saw this twist ending in this movie, it was really, really good. There is a cameo appearance by Jamie Lee Curtis as the voice of the curfew announcer and certain other parts of this movie. Now, when approached by the producers in studio about creating a third Halloween film, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill were very reluctant to pledge their commitment to it. John Carpenter and Deborah Hill agreed to participate in the new project only if it was not a direct sequel to the Halloween 2 movie, which meant Michael Myers would not be the main focus. The producers who produced the first two films filmed Halloween 3 on a budget of $2.5 million. Now basically the main story had to do with a lot of deception, psychological aspects, shocks, and physical certain nature and deformities of that. And they, you know, they took some of the inspiration from Invasion of the Body Snatchers, if you notice very closely. And certain aspects of certain things were done. Now, some of the plot elements were homages to old horror films of the 50s and 60s. And a lot of viewers didn't like how that was. And even though we have Tom Atkins, who, you know, was great in The Fog and in Escape from New York. I feel like this role that he played in this was very underrated. Tom Aikens was really good. He's fantastic. He's a great, great actor. He's very underrated. And he does star in a lot of B-horror movies after Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. If you've never seen Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, you have to check it out. Because this movie ends with one of the most shocking and crazy endings of all time. And I don't want to give it away because it's really good. And the reason I don't want to give it away is because I know many viewers and listeners out there have not seen this movie. Because they don't like it. They watch it, they get into it halfway, but they don't you know, really sit through it until the very end. The re- ending is what makes this movie great. The ending saves this movie. Up until that point, the ending, up until that point, the movie is, you know, somewhat, you know, slow moving. It's very science fiction-y. It's not really a horror movie at all. The only horror aspect of it is when the kids put on the mask and all of a sudden the mask melts and that's it. There's not many killings in this movie. And it's weird how this was done. This movie is a possession movie. And like I said, they did take a lot of inspiration from Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And it shows it was their own take. It was their own, you know, different way of doing things. And I commend Deborah Hill and John Carpenter for producing this. 
but you know, and trying to make Halloween three a different anthology of a series, and maybe making four and five, you know, a haunted house movie, or another movie, a poltergeist, or a ghost movie, or something along those lines. But with the failed success and with the failed attempt of Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, this didn't get that much praise at all until later on as it became a cult following hit among a lot of viewers like myself. I actually didn't like this movie at first, but then as I kept watching it, I realized that this was a really, really good movie and it works on so many levels in so many different ways. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Do you think it's a very underrated entry in the Halloween franchise? And do you think that it should be even considered to be a part of the Halloween franchise, even though when you say Halloween, you think Michael Myers? And would you have liked to have seen the route that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill wanted to go, where the movies were supposed to be an anthology series from part three on, where different aspects of stories were taking place on the night of Halloween? Let me know in the comment section below about the questions I just asked. And be sure you stay tuned for the next episode of the Markio Podcast where I talk about Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers. And be sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for new videos and new podcast episodes on the Markio Productions YouTube page. And follow Markio Productions on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And follow me, Anthony, your host on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. Filmstock. And follow the Markio Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll leave a link to all the social media accounts in the description box below. You can check it out and follow along. All right, everyone, that does it for today's episode. I'm your host, Anthony. Thanks for tuning in. The third commercial, it's still on, please. Take off the third channel, the third channel, it's still running. Stop it, please, for God's sake, please stop it. There's no more time. You've got to, please, stop it. Stop it now, turn it off. Turn it off. Stop it. 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 Stop it.